Okay, here's how I became a four-time Australian memory champion. Let's go. A lot of people want to know what the memory championships are, let alone being a memory champion. And the memory championships uh, essentially were, or still are, um, competitions around the world where people get together and memorize a whole bunch of numbers, names, um, just a whole bunch of random stuff like cards, binary digits, um, all that sort of stuff. And they ha usually have like 10 events, right? Um, they had one in Australia, or we've had it for many, many years, and I was fortunate enough to win it four times. Now, it wasn't, <laughs> it didn't happen straight away that I won four times. In fact, I tried for so many years, six long years to try and get to number one. Never happened. I kept failing. Um, most of the times I came second. I was memorizing more than anyone else, but I kept coming second. Um, one year I came last, but that was because I was trying to go for records and completely messed up everything. So how do I end up becoming a four-time memory champion? So I just want to go through uh, the process. So if anyone uh, maybe wants to enter memory competitions or wants to be inspired to win competitions or you know, break records, all that sort of stuff, um, hopefully this video might inspire you as well. But I'm just going to go through my journey. Um, I know everyone's journey is a bit different, but I'll just explain my one, go through it. Um, if it helps, it helps. Uh, it can only benefit you, I guess. So here we go. What I was doing was uh, when I first got into memory, I learned the memory palace, right? Method of loci, journey technique. So that's what I got into. Uh, first, obviously, I read memory books and so on, but the number one thing really was memory palace. So I'll just write this down. Memory palace. Can't even write it down, that's an R, <laughs> right? So I was doing the Memory Palace. Now, what the Memory Palace allowed me to do was cover all the 10 events, essentially. Well, you know, one of the events was remembering names. You really don't need to use a Memory Palace, but the Memory Palace allows you to uh, remember very large amount of data, right? Very, very quickly. So what it is, just very quickly, uh, if you haven't watched my Memory Palace videos, is that you go along a particular journey uh, or a set of locations, and for each location, you make up a story to be memorized onto those locations of things you want to remember. So for example, if you're going to memorize a shopping list, you want to remember, remember bread, uh, you picture the bread uh, on your front door. Right, you make up a silly story, the bread was blocking the door or something like that. Then you might head out to your driveway, which is a second location, and someone spilt milk. You're trying to remember milk. So what you're doing is you're setting uh, stories along a familiar path. And then in order to remember, you're going back from that path and saying, what was happening in the driveway? Oh, spilt milk. What was happening at the door? Oh, bread, and so on. So that helps your recall, right? Now, you can have hundreds of these locations, right? You can walk down the street, uh, you can have hundreds of them. Um, I've, got, uh, I've got thousands of them, <laughs> right? Um, I've got, say, 300 just walking down the street, going into petrol stations, going into you know, McDonald's, going into so many different areas, right? But it's all in order, and they're all in spreadsheets, right? Because I'm not silly enough to just remember them and keep them in there, right? Always record your locations, kiddies. So, Memory Palace, that's the, that's the first thing that very, very important, right? Once you've got your Memory Palaces, then you look at the events for the competitions, right? Now, competitions have changed since I've last entered. There's various competitions, there's online competitions via Memory League, um, so on, right? The US competition is very different. So many competitions are different, right? But Memory Palace will get you very, very far once you learn that. So once you learn the memory palace, then you're going to look at, okay, the events, um, are there random words? Most, most of the time there's random words, um, numbers, and so on, right? So for numbers, you need to learn the major system, right? I'll write it in capitals, major system, right? What this system is, is a way to remember numbers using a phonetic system. So for example, one is a T, two is an N. So if you've got the digits 12 together, then essentially you can make up a word tin, right? Or tan, so, right? So that's a, a lot of the events have numbers in them, right? So you're covering a, a whole bunch of elements just by learning the Mary Palace, a major system, right? Think about that. So once you've got that, then really what you need to know is how to make up a story, a connection, right? Linking and association. So I'll talk about that in another video, but that's essentially when you're doing a memory palace, a major system, you're practicing that anyway, 
right? Most of the time for memory palace. So you got the events. If you know what the events are, then you start practicing the events with these, right? That's like the, the first level stuff. That, that's what everyone does, right? That's, it may get you to being a memory champion, but remember, the other people that have been around for a while, they've already upgraded from these systems, <laughs> right? There's better techniques, better systems out there. So what you need to look at is, okay, what are the systems people are using? Uh, there's things like if you want to memorize cards, there's you know one image per card to memorize, or there's a person action system, or person action object, or shadow system, or you know one image per two cards, right? So that gives you 2,700 or whatever combination of cards that you have to memorize, right? It gets complicated, right? It gets complicated. So if you want to be a memory champion, right? What you need to do is you need to get the basics right first. You need to train the basics to see where you're at. What, what's your benchmark level at, right? If you can only memorize 40 digits in five minutes, you're not going to do much, right? But at least it's going to tell you this is where you're starting, right? So that's what I was doing. I was doing the very, very basics uh, and I did okay. I wasn't the greatest. Gee, there, there were people memorizing way more than me. But then afterwards, uh, because I was so excited about memory, right? And hopefully this is going to be you is you start upgrading your systems from here. You start coming up with better memory palaces. You start coming up with different versions of the major system. You might create your own system, right? Um, you might do different linking associations and so on. So this is where things get exciting. You move on from what you already know, right? So the question is, well, how do I know what to do? Well, here's the thing. If you start training more and more and more, you're gonna realize that there's limitations to what you can do with some of these things. So then you'll realize that, oh, I can only memorize X amount. Well, if I start to you know, double up my memory palaces or if I put two things into one or if I create a better system here or if I memorize a thousand images, I'm gonna memorize more. So that's when you get into a higher level. In fact, the more effort you put in here, the less effort you need to put in competitions. Right? Think about that. I'm going to say that again. So the more effort you put in, the more pre-memorization you do, the more you set yourself up, right? It, it's long, it's hard, but the more you do that, then the easier the competition gets. And you're not going to be stuck on the base level. So the goal, if you really want to start winning competitions, if you really want to start getting to the next level, is get up from the base level into the higher levels here and then once you're at that level, there is another level, right? There, there's more levels. Um, and that level is essentially analyzing again what you can do and then improving upon that, right? So whether it is creating brand new systems and you can do that, you don't have to look at the greatest memorizers in the world. Once you understand what works for you, then you can actually, you know, really look at these. And what I do with my clients generally, because I do coach people for memory competitions, is that I do analysis. I, I do like Google Sheets and look at the whole, um, you know, we do exercises. So I do a whole analysis of how their memorization is. And then what I do from that analysis, look at, okay, what are the weak points? What are the strong points? Uh, and then how can we improve it through various little systems? And it's all trial and error because I can't just say, look, here's one way that works. You might find, uh, a, you know, a 12th system out there, right? Uh, when you've you know done it a hundred times. So uh, I guess what I'm trying to say is trial and error works best because if you find that one system that works for you, man, that's amazing. So um, this video is going for quite long, but what I'm trying to say is there's multiple levels in order to win a memory championships. And what I did was I did the very basics first, then from the basics, I moved up levels. Uh, and then finally, once I moved up levels, I was fortunate enough to sustain that effort for a long period of time, you know, for many, many years. So that's another uh, point. If you want to be a champion, you're going to be persistent, right? That's the goal, persistence. And you can't just learn a few skills and try and be the best. Be persistent, uh, be open to learning, be open to getting help because that's what's going to help you, right? Hopefully this video has helped out and inspired all you memory athletes. Um, if you've got any questions, feel free to comment down below and uh, I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.